All right, I'm going to have a go at the Guardian's weekly Everyman crossword set by Everyman. Let's see what we have. Charts showing me origins of shipping forecast areas. Peril at sea. I think it's going to be peril at sea. Something like a coral reef or a tidal wave. And the wordplay charts showing me. Hmm, not sure what that could mean. Origins of shipping forecast areas. Sounds like SFA, which of course has its own meaning. Um, peril. Oh, maybe not. Maybe the, the definition is charts, because I'm thinking at sea can be an anagram indicator. And so maybe at the end we anagram peril. But I'm not seeing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. All right, let's try one down. For starters, Roger Allum didn't attend. Well, I don't know who Roger Allum is, but I know every man likes to have clues where we take the starting letters or the ending letters of some of the words. And here I can see Rada, which is the... Um, Royal Academy of the Dramatic Arts. A lot of British actors went there, so I presume Roger Allum is an actor. Let me pause and look him up. Yes, Roger Allum is an actor, so I think Rada is right. Uh, and I so then maybe is that true? He didn't attend Rada. He has performed on stage, in film, on television, and radio. He is now 70 years old. Good for him. Oh, he was Inspector Javert in the original London production of Les Miserables. Oh, and he was in Game of Thrones, but who wasn't? <laughs> anyway, I never saw uh, Game of Thrones, I'm afraid. All right, so now our charts, our peril at sea. Who is something tied? Shipping for maybe the shipping forecast is, yeah, I think we're supposed to think this is all to do with shipping, which is uh, probably not correct. Um, let's try nine across. Bloody bell, sounded by Spooner, look alike. Uh, so I'm thinking. It's how the Reverend Spooner might describe a bloody bell reversing the initial consonant sounds. And it's going to give us a look-alike. What's another phrase for a look-alike? Doppelganger, of course. Oh, a dead ringer. Ah, yes, yeah, so... For the Reverend Spooner, he would say a red uh, dinger. <laughs> so that's a, that's a funny one. But good to get the Spoonerism. Uh, start with the French on In Our Time. Oh, I love In Our Time. I listened to it on the BBC Sounds uh, app. I think my uh, second favorite part of In Our Time is at the end when the producer puts his head around the door and asks if anyone wants tea or coffee. But my absolutely favorite part is every now and then Melvin, who's getting on in years, he gets a little bit cranky with one of the experts they've brought in to discuss the topic of the week and he isn't happy with their answer to his question. That's always good for a laugh. Anyway, start with, well, the French you would think would be uh, le, la, le. Maybe start with the French on. 
in our time no not saying it one one drawn in by last two pieces in the skewer getting attention i don't know why the skewer is uh italicized is that a is it an actual title or are they just want us to think it is could the last two pieces simply be e and r oh or mayo maybe the, the last two pieces in the are h e but the skewer could be e and the r and getting attention is it something noise you make when you clear your throat as i often do a hem or um one drawn in oh if it's the less two pieces h h uh, no no not getting it um for such a short word it's giving me a lot of trouble vehicles comics genial evans at center now is evans um some british chris evans vehicles no not seeing it let's try this before concluding parts of episode reardon ed got smart i don't know is there someone called ed reardon let me look that up ah, it's a, a sitcom on bbc radio 4 called ed reardon's week so i do wonder if there is a radio 4 theme because we have in our time Maybe the skewer is on Radio 4. Oh, the shipping forecast, of course, in the first clue. I'm just looking down. I see some oh loose ends. I thought that was on uh, television, but maybe a lot of these things start on the radio. Oh, things fell apart with uh, John Ronson. Again, I've listened to that on the podcast app, uh, BBC Sounds. I always like at the end when he says things fell apart is written by me john ronson he always seems surprised oh it's written by me anyway uh so maybe some of these other names i see hosts uh just one thing woman's hour oh yeah that's been running is that one of the longest running radio programs all right so i think there is a theme but this has probably got nothing to do with that and just using the names for wordplay maybe got smart is the definition something like wised up or well it could also of course be uh, got smart as in appearance dressed up before concluding parts of episode well episode ends in de um no all right let's go back to the acrosses all right ceremony ponderous pronouncement crashes pips regularly all right uh, well regularly always makes me think it's going to be the even or the odd letters uh, is it going to be within crashes pips well that would be c-a-h-s or r-s-e no i don't think so ceremony it's a lot of words for just a four-letter word ceremony could be a rite ponderous pronouncement oh that's a ponderous oration or something like that hmm no very tricky all right how about fish eaten by 
Martha Kearney. Well, I don't know who Martha Kearney is, I'm afraid, but uh, I can see this is a hidden clue. Within that name, we have Hake, which is a fish. Now, this one we have to see 20 down. Show what hapless crossword setter admitted. Oh, it's going to be one of those uh, Radio 4 comedy panel shows. I'll read that again. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, if it's a hapless crossword setter, I'm sorry I haven't a clue. I thought it was, I'm sorry I haven't got a clue, but must not be. I'm sorry I have, whoop, I, oh, hold on. Oh no, I'm starting in the wrong place. Oh dear. Let's uh, try doing it the right way. All right. I'm a little bit of a hapless crossword solver myself. I'm sorry. I haven't a clue. All right. Is that the one with um, Barry Cryer? And I think uh, maybe some of the goodies were on it. Tim Brooke Taylor. All right, but well, that's a useful one to get. Lots of uh, good crossing letters. Ooh, including this N and V vehicles. Minivan comes to mind. Which we have Evans. Could it be um, some other hidden? Comics, Genie Elevens. Yeah, I'm not seeing how that would work. Let me put it in, just take another look at it. Minivan. Uh, not sure. Let's try Marion welcomes Tara's tip. One that's out of this world. Well, there must be a famous Marion and Tara, because I think this is a very obvious one. I think every man would only put those names in if it was a clever reference to someone on Radio 4. Um, I don't think it's going to be the Irish radio personality, Marion Finucane. But uh, I think it's just Martian. You just put the tip of Tara, the T, inside of Marion. And you get a Martian who's out of this world. All right. Bohemian. Radio's dead air. So is it going to be a Bohemian as in someone who lives an artistic life? Uh, free of society's morals, maybe? Or is it something to do with the original Bohemia? It's over in the Czech Republic, is it? Radio's dead air could be a homophone indicator. Dead air, something that sounds like a phrase meaning dead and air. No, how about uh, intros to loose ends? Well, that would probably be the L and the E interrupting journalists they rise in irritation well your hackles can rise when you're irritated and hacks are journalists uh, uh, um, yes yeah, not a very complimentary term for journalists all right just getting some good letters let's maybe go back to the downs i still have nothing on that or that or that Oh, crawling about salon with flower. Well, I'm thinking of a phrase that means crawling, and it would be an anagram of salon flower, and that's on all fours. That's good. Um, 
hosts, quietly, bitter ones. Well, quietly can be P for pian, pian, piano, pianissimo. Bitter ones, something like, hmm. But I'm thinking it's going to mean, oh, yes. Um, so if you're bitter, you might resent things. And if you put a P in front of it, you get presenters who are radio and television hosts. Now our ceremony, oh, pomp. Ponderous pronouncement, crashes pips regularly. I think pomp fits certainly for ceremony. But how is ponderous pronouncement? Something like pomposity, crashes pips. I am not seeing that at all. No, no, not seeing it. Now my bohemian is, uh, looks like something out. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a phrase that means bohemian as in, uh, I don't know exactly how you would define bohemian, but as an adjective. And then maybe it is a homophone for stead air. Like the uh, show is out, the waves are out, the tune out. No, nope, not saying it. Mum, child, rattle, Container. Ooh, so I think it might be container as the definition. Uh, so mum, mum could be ma, and then child. Oh, son. And then if something rattles you, it might jar you, and you get a mason jar. Now, I don't think I heard of mason jars until I moved to the USA. Are they well known in Britain and Ireland, mason jars? I thought they were an American thing. All right. Uh, fashionable panelist on the radio one putting you in stitches. Well, because we have these letters, I think fashionable must be in. A panelist could be a juror with an O, but since it's on the radio, I think it's a homophone. And I think it's going to be just ER, someone who injures you or puts you in stitches. All right, where will we go now? Let's try this uh, Things Fall Apart one. Mysteries Arisen Bears with Start of Things Fell Apart. Oh my goodness. Hard to know where the definition is of that. It's a hyphenated word ending S something R. I presume it's going to be like an S-U-R-E word. Could be an S-T-R-Y. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing it. Award describing second letter from soul music producer. I think describing in wordplay can mean one thing goes around another. And now is it going to be the second letter from soul, which is the O, and it's going to give us a music producer? Or is it going to go around B as the second letter of the alphabet? 
Let me look up the soul music. This one might actually be referring to the radio for, I presume it was a documentary series. Let me look it up. Well, the um, Radio 4 series Soul Music, first broadcast in 2000. It's actually not about soul music, as I would have thought. It's any kind of music that has emotional impact. The first episode had Elgar's Cello Concerto. And each episode has its own producer, so... I think the definition is maybe going to be music producer. Oh, of course, which could also be an instrument. But therefore, I think it's going to be the second letter from soul. And we're going to have an award. Could be an MBE. Oh, could be an OBE. Going around the O, giving us an oboe. Uh -huh. All right. Powerful man alongside... Nick Robinson. Oh, does he present the Today program? At the start and end, dancing about. Wow, powerful man. Maybe is the definition alongside Nick. Of course, Nick can mean to take, to steal, or it can also be to cut. Uh, Robinson at the start and end makes me think the R and the N of Robinson with dancing about it. Um, so maybe some form of dancing like tango going around R and N. Um, no, not seeing it. Check third character in just one things heading off. No, I get that. I think that's another one where the well, no, I think the definition maybe is check. Third character again could be the C from the alphabet, R third character in just could be an S. One could be an I. Things heading off as some, that may be a three letter word for a thing that is missing its first letter. Um, oh. No, not seeing it. Artist had yarn with owl taking part in ramblings, which I assume then is another Radio 4 program. Artist is often R-A. And I think 4-6. When I see two words like that, I suppose I should be thinking it might be somebody's name. And so it could be an actual artist. Although, no, I think it might be taking part in ramblings. It could be a something like a hill walker or a uh, yarn with owl. Yeah. Oh, something hooter. Artist had yarn with owl. Nope. Let's go back to the downs. Uh, Herc's head, which might just be the H, aviation firm, that's slim. Ooh. I think it might mean slim, but I'm um, not thinking of any word. What's going to come between the H and the I? An A. Um, hairline could be something like a hairline fracture. Oh, yeah. An air, uh, aviation firm is an airline, of course. <laughs> it took me a moment for the penny to drop with that one. There we go. 
All right, a politician greeting Webb finally promises on the waves to become grounded. Well, that something M, something H is very interesting. I'm thinking immediately of EMPH to become grounded. What else could it be? I don't think anything else could come between M and H. But if it is EMPH, oh, it could be AMPH, AMP, grounded. I think grounded is being used loosely here as indicated by the question mark. Let's look at the word play. Oh yeah, so a politician could definitely start with AMPA. Sorry, AMP, a politician. Oh, greeting could be hi. Web finally could be a B. Well, oh, amphibious. Yeah, so promises um, are IOUs. And then on, I think the definition is on the waves to become grounded. So an amphibious vehicle can go from the sea to land. Or amphibious animal, of course, like a frog. Ah, that's clever. All right, it took me a little longer than it should have. Again, uh, I do have my coffee. Let me pause and sip some and hope that wakes me up a bit more. All right, uh, caught by Jake Yap's second character, rock out and amuse. Well, I presume it's going to be something a something. I don't know who Jake Yap is. I have a feeling that's not important, but let me pause and look him up. Yes, he's a British comedian, composer. He's worked a lot on Radio 4. He also did a parody of A Day in the Life of Radio 4. I must look that up. Uh, so yeah, he looks like he's a funny, clever character. So uh, he had a character called... Uh, where was it? Dame Dora Dale. Anyway, uh, again, probably not. So it's probably Yap's second character is the A. And caught by oh, Jake, I think, are uh, the Jacks. You know, we used to say in Dublin that Jacks was the toilet. But I think there's like a form J-A-K-E-S. I don't know if it's a reference to the toilet, the lavatory. Rock out. And I think the whole thing is going to be a muse, like uh, raise a smile, um, crack a crack a joke. How about that? I like that. Um Rock out, I think, might be an anagram of rock. Um, yeah, I'm not ex exactly sure how that's going to work, but um, let me leave it in for now. Fry rank chicken. Well, there's famous Fry, who I'm sure has appeared on Radio 4 many times, although I know him more from television. And that would be Stephen. And so I suppose a rank could be a step, and a chicken is definitely a hen. All right. How about initially? Oh, I think this is going to be like the other four-letter one we had, where we had to take the starting letters every man's trusting 
Claudia Hammond to make impression. That must be Etch. Again, I'm not sure who Claudia Hammond is. The name is somewhat familiar. Uh, just like Brian Aldridge. Um, I sort of know that name, but not, not exactly. But somewhat suggests perhaps a hidden clue within the name Brian Aldridge. And if you're obsessive, you might be described as being anal. Poor Brian Aldridge has that in his name. All right. Um, finally, a three letter. Woman's hour. Yes. Covered one who laughs. Oh. Sorry, it's hard to get the clue and the actual three letters. Not that we have any of them. Woman's hour. Yes, it's an awful lot of words for just three letters. The starting letters of Woman's Hour, yes, or why, but that wouldn't be covered one who laughs. Yeah, Woman's, of course, can be W and H could be Hour but covered one, so maybe we put an I in the middle for one who laughs. No, I'm not seeing it. Let's um, try. Um, I do want to go back to this one because I'm noticing mysteries here. The first word looks like it could be brain, and then immediately I think of something that uh, I wouldn't know, call them exactly mysteries, but things that test your brain could be brain teasers. Uh, let's see, bears with start of things. Um, I think bears is going to be anagram. Oh, I think it's bears and start, maybe? Let me pause and check those letters. Ah, yeah, I completely missed the word arisen. So it's arisen plus bears, but that's only 11 letters. We need one more. So we add the start of things, and then all of those letters fell apart or were anagrammed. All right, that's clever. Uh, now our powerful man. Ooh, um... Ooh, well, I, I first thought of charlatan and realized that's not long enough, but we could have the Charleston. Oh, yeah, so the powerful man, of course, is King Charles. Alongside Nick Robinson at the start and end. Oh, um... Well, alongside Nick, Robinson at the start and end. Well, we have end at the start and end of Nick Robinson. But where is the T-O then coming from? If that single N is double doing double duty at the start and end of Nick Robinson. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, here's our check third character in just one things heading off. No. Now our artist had yarn with Owl taking part in ramblings. Oh, um, thinking Andy is, oh, Andy Warhol, of course, is the artist. With that H something L at the end. So, uh, Yarn and Owl are going to be anagrammed 
but we need three more O W is one of the others. So we still need two more letters. Well, unless uh, the RA for artist is um, going to do double duty again. Let me pause and check. Yarn Owl. Oh no, it's the width isn't one of the W's because we already have a W. Let me uh, pause and check that. <laughs> again, I uh, overlooked a word. I think this one is a little easier to understand why I overlooked it, but it's had. Uh, so had, yarn, owl, and all of those letters take part in ramblings or anagramming to give us Andy Warhol. So now 26 down. Um, I wanted it to be era. Covered one who laughs, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not... Uh, The only thing I can think of is the Equal Rights Amendment ERA in the United States, but could that be Woman's Hour? And then the covered one who laughs is wordplay? No, I don't think so. Let me pause and think what else E something A could be. Well, I can think of another few possibilities, but I don't think any of them are likely. ETA for estimated time of arrival, uh, ENA, ENA, reference to ENA Sharples. I don't think she was famous for laughing. Um, EVA, EVA, or the uh, East European version EWA. I don't think so. So now I'm wondering if Charleston is right, but the T and the N are definitely right. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to put in there. Um, I will publish this video next Sunday and I'll put in a comment what the answer should be. For now, I suppose I'll put in era, that's the most likely word. But yeah, I'm not 100% powerful with the ending of uh, Charleston. Dancing about, I mean, about really seems like it's wordplay, but uh, could it be Charlemagne or somebody like that? Uh, no, not seeing it. All right, let's uh, head back to the start. Peril at sea, something missed. Something mast charts showing me no, not seeing it. And this one start with the French on. Oh, with the French on, I suppose I should have thought about that. I was fixated on the French, but it could be the French on which would be sur sur le table yes you are no i don't think that's going to be in our time no <laughs> and one drawn in by last two pieces getting attention Could it be one drawn? A bath is drawn? No. Before concluding parts of episode, Reardon Ed got smart. No. How about my Bohemian? Oh, a dropout. Ah, yes, yeah, so I think a dropout might be a bohemian, a hippie type. 
Um, and um, I think I know dropout when you're listening to music and maybe there's a sudden moment of silence that something has happened to the recording, there's a dropout. Maybe it's a term used in radio as well, because I don't think it's a homophone dropout. No, I don't think so. But uh, so I think this is going to be got smart as the definition. Oh, how about cleaned? Maybe before concluding parts of episode reared and ed got smart um, concluding parts of episode could be to be continued now let me uh, pause and see what other words would fit in there well, apart from cleaned, there's also preened, and I like that because I can see how the charts in one across could be maps. And also there's a P in peril, so if that is part of the wordplay. Um, then showing me would be part of wordplay, I think. So maybe... Yeah, no, but I think map, something maps, um, charts. What would the R word be? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little at sea with that one. Um, right, I, I don't think it's... The definition is going to include the shipping forecast areas. I think that has to be wordplay. And there has to be at least an S and an F. Yes, yeah, so peril is five letters plus me and SFA. Yeah, let me pause and anagram that. Well, it took me a while to get it, but uh, I was thinking of refile maps, but then I realized, oh, relief maps. Maps that show the, um, well, what exactly are relief maps? Are they the three-dimensional ones? I think they are. Um, so now three down, I'm wondering if this is simply er, as in... Something you, well, to err, of course, is human, but I'm wondering if it's just saying err, but I think that's just one R, E-R. One drawn in. Could it be ear? I think ear is maybe more likely. One drawn in. My last two pieces in the skewer is the, I think, the E and the R. Getting attention, getting A. Oh my goodness, very, every man is supposed to be easier. And here I am, I'm almost at 45 minutes and uh, it has been tough. Now start with, I think it might be lead. Uh, which, oh, yes, L-E. Oh, and our time, of course, is Anno Domini. Ah, yes, yeah, so that, that makes sense. So just uh, this one, check third character in just one thing's heading off. Um, well, I thought the third character in just was the S, and then I think the one must be an I. How is S-I-E a word meaning check? And then we have something E-T is a thing with their heading off. 
I don't think so. One thing, oh, one thing uh, could be A, but <laughs> I think SAE is even less likely. Let me look up what words are S something E spec. No, let me uh, check it. Uh, there was a long list of words, but um, I immediately saw stem. And I thought, oh, you have to check the flow of something can be to stem it. And so it is the S. One thing is an item and its heading is taken off to give us stem. Well, I don't know about you, but I found that very challenging this week. Please let me know if, uh, if it's just me and you found it a breeze. And uh, that would be good information for me to have, or if you agree that it was a little bit more difficult than usual. And I am expecting some of these to be wrong, era and ear. Funny, I've put in two anagrams there, but I am not at all uh, confident about those two. All right, well... <laughs> That was the Everyman crossword for this week. Thank you as always for watching and have a wonderful day.